I'm going to start with the leadership change here. As Backish is out, and now there's this sort of committee of different um, heads of divisions forming the office of the CEO. Play, putting aside everything else going on with the company, if we can, is this the right move for Paramount? Thanks for having me. And really, there is so much to pay attention to. It's hard to really focus on one piece without looking at the others. And definitely the timing around the CEO transition is certainly interesting as, of course, raises the question, is this what is best to make sure that M&A will be completed as it is very evident that the Redstone family is looking uh, to cash out uh, and make a deal. And this could potentially weigh on whether or not we will see a deal be made by this Friday when those 30 day um, uh, exclusivity period with Skydance comes to a close. But just looking at the business fundamentals, M&A aside, Paramount has been facing a variety of challenges over the last few years. Is trying to find the best way to stabilize its traditional linear TV business while also make the pivot to streaming. And there are definitely some positive signs in streaming. If we look at those operating results, it's trimming losses uh, for Paramount Plus. It's continuous subscriber growth. There are definitely some things going in the right direction there. Uh, but whoever does ultimately get in that CEO seat, as you mentioned, the three executives are currently there now. It is a tough job. They still do need to figure out what the transition looks like and how can Paramount do that fast enough uh, before they really start to see further pressure on their underlying traditional media business. I am, I am interested, Jamie, though, you know, this deal between Paramount and Skydance, as you know, with exclusive talks uh, until May 3rd. I mean, bottom line, Jamie, as you look at it, um, do, do you think that deal does get done? You know, at this point, it is really tough to say because on the one hand, there are definitely some advantages to controlling uh, or the controlling voting shareholders right now. Uh, but at the same time, there's been a lot of pushback uh, from uh, regular shareholders here too and looking at ways in which this might not be uh, the deal which they envision for Paramount. Because also, if we look at this, if Skydance is able to ultimately get this through, it does definitely create a powerhouse in terms of studio capabilities. It doesn't fully address some of the challenges facing the linear parts of that business, though. And a lot of those challenges will persist. And while certainly the balance sheet might be in a more stable position, I, there's not necessarily a clear plan as to what the, uh, the best way is to address those underlying issues. So. We could see a deal, but there definitely does still seem to be a lot of discussion going on at the 11th hour here. And Jamie, what do you think is the best outcome for shareholders? So what we've been hearing at Third Bridge is at the end of the day for Paramount, the most likely move is to break up this business. There are a lot of very valuable assets here. If we look at the history, of the Paramount studio, the uh, IP that they have, the capabilities they have to churn out some of the biggest movies of the last few years. There's definitely a lot which that business can offer. Uh, but at the same time, there are other parts which you know might not necessarily make the most sense to hold on to going forward. Right now, let's not forget another moving piece right now is the fact that Paramount is engaging in carriage negotiations with Charter. And we might see a very fundamentally different picture for what's going on with those cable assets going forward. And there might be a future where Paramount should try to really just uh, not rely as much on some of those tier two cable properties, which might not be able to gain distribution or add dollars going forward. So what we're hearing is that we could see a bit more of a breaking up of this company to really realize the true potential of different parts of that business. The question, of course, though, is who's going to manage the more challenging parts of that media portfolio, which are not necessarily what everyone wants to pick up right now. And, and Jamie, get you out here on this. You know, this is all against the backdrop of a of much tougher regulatory environment. Um, I'm just curious if a deal got done, what kind of regulatory risks do you think, Jamie, there'd be here? Yeah, so the big regulatory piece is all focused around what it really means to own and operate a network. If we look at CBS, it certainly has a lot of value to it. There are a lot of uh, interesting aspects there from the sports rights that that includes, but there are certain companies which would not be able to run that business. If we were to think about Comcast hasn't been in the picture here, but what it would mean for them to operate NBC and CBS, that's something which regulators would not uh, most likely uh, take a, uh, a positive view on. So looking at ultimate ownership of CBS is something which would definitely uh, bring some regulatory scrutiny. And then also just the other piece about overall concentration in media assets. I mean, if we think about the landscape today, um, there's certainly been a number of cases where deals have, have been stalled or delayed in the media space. Um, so just thinking about what that suitor is, what scale they already have, is something which could factor into this as well.